Your eyes are not deceiving you. I am not Pastor Dave. I know we're about the same height, but... Uh, So before we start, let's pray. Father God, we thank you once again for this beautiful day we can gather together. How glorious it is to be called a child of God and that we're able to be here this morning and worship you and we're able now to sit in sweet communion with you through your Holy Spirit and learn of you. Be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. If we look up at the screen, today's topic is why church? Why church? And if you think that this message might be about you, well, yeah, it is. So... Listen up. But I didn't have any one person in mind. So if you think that, that's not true. Um, If we read in Acts 2, 42 and 43, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers, then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And I've been practicing the last couple of days very, very much on my Pastor Dave impression. (laughs) But not like you think, of of Carl Vitelli. So I'm going to read this again. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayers. (laughs) How was that, good? For those of you that don't know what that was all about, from time to time, Pastor Dave does his imitation of me. So I was wondering how I did. And with that applause, I guess it was pretty good. And there he is. When I, when I think about why church, I, I, I think back when I was a child and um, I went to church because mom and dad told me to, which is not like I did with my children, but it was different. It was an obligation in order, I don't know, I can't put my finger, I, I look back now and I know why, but when, as you got older, you put two and two together and you said, well, this is how I got to get to heaven. You know, I got to do this and I got to do that. And, and I have to perform this ritual or that ritual and hopefully God will be pleased with me. I didn't think of that when I was very, very young. I was just scared to death, you know, when I went to church. And I was bored stiff, too. Uh, not like some of you may be, you know. Uh, could be, um, but let's let's move. Let's look at some other reasons why. Oh, I'm going to tell you one little story about when I was a kid, and I don't know if, if you've ever had this up. This happened with you. Um, I used to go with my cousin Robert once in a while, and we would just get the giggles. Did that ever happen to anyone in church? And man, oh man, I tell you, we just couldn't stop. I don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, very very reverent we were. So why church? Okay, here comes a Pastor Dave invitation. You ready? What's up with this thing, these technologies? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh. Well, I'll get this. Why church? Maybe guilt is why we come to church. There's a nice family going to church. Maybe a little uh, coercion. (laughs) 
I mean, I was that teenager, oh, I got to go to church, mom and dad, so oh, I'm going to church. Well, maybe a little, you know, if you don't go, I'm going to knock your block off. <laughs> or maybe we just want adulation and praise when we go to church. You know, a little thumbs up, a little pat. Hey, I go to church. I'm a good guy, right? I got perfect attendance. I go every week. God loves me for them. I mean... You know, and that's what I used to think about when I was a young man growing up. If I just go to church every week, right? The, can I get an amen out of anyone in here? All right, if I go to church every week, God's got to be pleased with that. And then I'll go to heaven, right? And I could wear a tie. Look at that nice tie. Perfect attendance award. Well, there's other reasons why people go to church. To get some good sleep. Anybody watch uh, the Andy Griffith show? There's uh, Barney Fife and there's, uh, there's Sheriff Andy Taylor looking up to the heavens and praying for his buddy. Homer Simpson and the whole family, and they're, they're, they're just nodded out. It's Mr. Bean. Oh, you know Mr. Bean? He's trying to stay. <laughs> so to catch up on some sleep, and then sometimes you just, that's it, you're done. <laughs> I actually watched this whole clip. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. And I have to confess that your elder here has fallen asleep in church. I'm so sorry. I, uh, I've been, my whole life I've been fighting that. Um, but uh, so from now on, you've got to keep your eye on me and say, make sure I don't fall asleep. Throw something at me. So what is the church? What or who is the church? Right? First Corinthians chapter one, verse two. We've all must have not all of us, but most of us have read it. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. So if we examine this, it's like, if I say I go to church, I'm going to church today, right? And we, and we usually think of the building down the block, or I'm going to church. Where do you go to church? Where do you go to church? That building, that, that place. Or I, I gather uh, over there. <clears throat> What does this say? What is the identity of the church? The church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are the sanctified in Christ Jesus. So the, the church are the people who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, who are called to be saints. So these are the chosen that are sanctified in Christ. That's the church. So when you go to church, guess where you're going? You're going to, you're the church. So I'm going to church, I'm, I'm the church, I'm going to church. It's not that I'm going to church today and play church, I'm going to do this and that. You are the church. If you're sanctified in Christ Jesus and you're called to be a saint, See that? So there's a qualifier there. See that? These, these are all, all my cues, and I just blew all my cues. <laughs> so which leads me to talk to about the body of Christ. And you hear that term a lot, 
the body, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. So what, what exactly is the body of Christ? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 to 26. <clears throat> For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. So he's, he's ex trying to explain to the church about the physical body. Prior to that, he's talking about the, the church and its, and, its, and its members. And he's, and he's explaining that it's all a part of one. So in verse 15, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each of them in the body, just as he pleased. I'm going to give an audience participation. <laughs> it's only because I said it, so you don't interrupt it later. Only when I say audience participation. <laughs> because I don't want you to get the idea you could just call out at any time. <laughs> Who has set you, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to every one of you, who has set you in the place where you are? Let's hear it louder. God. So God has set you there. God, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, as he pleased. How does that make you feel? Pretty good. I'm important for God. Right? You mean something, each one of you, if you're part of the church, if you're the called, if you're a saint of God. So that's a, you know, I, you know once in a while you see people come into church and, and they think they're not important or they're, or they're not, uh, you know, I'm not the pastor of the church or I'm, uh, I'm not called Vitelli, you know, <laughs> or I'm not Rocco or Johnny D or someone that, that you see, but every part is important to God, just like your body. So he's trying to make, if, if who's ever had a paper cut, <laughs> right? Now, I mean, that's is the most insignificant thing that could happen to you. I mean, you know, we just had a brother, Rick Corsi, had open heart surgery, had triple bypass surgery, and he's doing much better now. Uh, he's on the way to, he's actually walking around and, but that's something big. But, but now how about just a paper cut? I mean, when I get a paper cut, it spoils my day. I mean, this little paper cut is so annoying. I mean, I mean, I mean, look at me. I'm six foot four, size 13 shoe. I'm a giant, right? And here's this little thing. It's about a quarter of an inch long and I can't type on my computer at work. I can't handle a pen, I can't do anything, and I, I got to use this hand. That's how important my hand is to me, this little part of my finger, or try brushing your teeth or doing everything. This is what the body is. Every part of the body is important, and it means something to, to God. God has set you here. There's the body. The next time I do this, I'll get a little better with my uh, clicker stuff. <laughs> the diversity of the body. First Corinthians, I'm staying in First Corinthians a lot today. First Corinthians 12, 14 to 26. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have, not, I'm, I have, not, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. No matter, no much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. See that? And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, like my paper cut, on these we bestow greater honor and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. 
but God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Do you get that? Do you get that? My beautiful sister Jane McCarsky is here. And when I think of this where it says, and if one member suffers, I think of Mark. And that I had the privilege of knowing Mark McCarsky. And, and the honor of being by his bedside the night before he passed from here, from this world into the, into the world of, with his glorious Savior. And to comfort his, his dear wife as best I could. I would not have experienced that. I, it's hard. Suffering is hard, and we all suffer together, but that's the body. And I had the honor of being with my dear, precious friend, Mark McCarsky, in his last hours. I would never trade that for anything. And I think of another brother, John D'Angelo. Uh, many of you know him, many of you don't. He left this congregation and moved, and his wife, Kelly, moved to um, South Carolina uh, in October of 2020. John was going fast. The doctor said he had six months to live. But I was talking to John periodically after his, his diagnosis and when he was in the hospital. I, 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 I said, he, he's, he's going. I just felt it, and, I, and I, just his speech and talking with him. And I told my wife, we're going down to South Carolina. I says, I'm, I'm calling up work. I'm telling him I can't come into work. And I drove... It seemed like forever. I've, did, I've, done, I've driven to Florida, but I, that was a while ago. And as you get older, you just, uh, it's not the same. <laughs> but what person would, out of the blue, just drive to South Carolina? I mean, that's just not normal. I mean, I, you know, when you think about it, you can't do it. I mean, it's crazy, right? But, if you're, it, but he's my brother. And I was compelled to see. I needed to see him. And um, where does that come from? It comes from God. And it's it, because we're apart. We're, we're together. We're a family. And, that, and that's, that's the beauty of the body of Christ, that we can suffer together. And what a glorious trip that was. That I got to, to see my buddy and, and, and hold hands with him and pray with him. And I got him on FaceTime, and I shared him with my friend John Graham, and he was forever grateful to me, and 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 his and his beautiful wife Carol, and uh, you know, where do you get that opportunity? But but being a part of the body of Christ, and it was all because of Jesus Christ. You know, oh, you cluckers. It's my Pastor Dave imitation. Here's some more about the body. And he himself gave some to be apostles. We're talking about the, more about the body, right? identifying more about it. Some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love 
may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth to the body for the edifying of itself in love. That's a lot of stuff. I'll touch on a couple of things. Everybody thinks it's the job of the pastor to do everything in the church, right? That's what I used to think. It's the job of the pastor and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Say that? Did you catch that? It's the job of the pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. Is this your home? Is, is Pastor Dave Durande your pastor? Or are you, what are, where are you, who are you learning from? This is what God has set up. God has set up the body in such a way. We are his sheep and Dave is our, is our shepherd and I am, I'm an elder, I am your shepherd also. And it is our responsibility to teach the flock of God why? That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. A lot of people, a lot of Christians are, they're all over the internet. They're on, and I'm not saying I don't do that, but they're on the internet and they're watching this preacher and that preacher and this and that. You have to get plugged into a church. You have to be a part of a church. And it's what the beauty of this congregation is that the Pastor Dave goes through step by step. He goes through verse by verse, line by line through a book. And that brings continuity to the scripture, that we get an overall view of scripture from Genesis to Revelation. It's not uh, topical as, if, as what I'm doing now, but you, you get a flavor of, of, the, of the continuity of scripture and what, and what it's all about. And without that, you'll get someone that speaks on this and speaks on that and avoids this and avoids that. And we don't do that here. So be very, very grateful of the preaching that you get from this pulpit. There's no picking and choosing in here. We get the, we get the word of God. Every, the effect of working by which every part does its share causes what? So all of this that we're under the tutelage of the headship of the, the people that are running the church, the, the, the elders, the, 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 the elders, the pastors, that causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. That's the main point in this scripture. Do this, let's see. Oh. Oh. So what we do, and they continued, this is the back to the Acts chapter 2, 42 and 43, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Click. There we go. They continued steadfastly. This was after the, that if you're familiar with the passage, it's after the apostle Peter um, spoke on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 were saved in which he told them, about Jesus, whom you crucified, he told them. And they were cut to the heart. And after this, they asked, well, what shall we do? And he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved and be baptized, every one of you. So after this, they continued steadfastly in, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Continued steadfastly. Continued, what does that word mean? It means they kept coming. They kept coming steadfastly. What does that mean? 
That means they were diligent. They were unwavering. They were loyal. See? The apostles' doctrine, the word of God. Oh, there we go. In fellowship. So, right here, we're in, we're in fellowship. We're, work, we're worshiping together. We're listening to the word of God together. We're growing together. Um, I didn't even hit that and I came down. <laughs> Must be a delayed reaction. Because I kept hitting it before. In the breaking of bread, they went from house to house and they had fellowship with one another. So they, they knew each other. There's, there's nothing like having a meal with another Christian, right? There's the old adage, I'm, I break bread with you. And, and to be with um, another believer and, and to share a meal is what they did. And we could also talk about the Lord's Supper with them, how we, we do it as a, as a community of believers and we, and, we, and we share in the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Is someone, uh, Susan, are you doing that? <laughs> Thank you, Susan. <laughs> and prayers. So uh, back to the doctrine and fellowship and breaking your bread, because Susan, I, you went a little too quick on one of them. That's okay. <laughs> um, Take advantage, I think I, I mentioned it this morning, if you were here in the announcements, we have the ladies get together on Tuesday night, besides learning in the morning. Tuesday night, and then I think in the summer, it's Monday mornings, and I think it's usually Tuesday nights during the year. Take advantage of that. I mean, we're in the world all day long, which is great, because we're, to we're supposed to shine our light to the world, but you need you need your, your food, you need your, your your sustenance, and that comes in the in the teachings, you know. So we have the ladies Bible study on Tuesday. We have a Bible study on Thursday night. It's fantastic. First John, fantastic. Can I get an amen for those that go on Thursday night? Amen. Right? Could you imagine that for missing a Thursday night? I can't imagine it. You know. And then Saturday, men's breakfast. Who we got any men's breakfast people here? Mm -hmm. Amen. Could you imagine missing men's breakfast? I can't imagine it, right? So that's my commercial <laughs> for, for those things. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I need them. I need them. Uh, prayers. They gather together in prayers. Who's my Wednesday night prayer people? Could you imagine missing Wednesday night? I mean... Of all the things we do in this church, Wednesday night prayer meeting is probably the greatest. To, to pray with one another. I mean, we're like, about 10 to 12 of us get together, and I, I would hope to be 100 of us. But the sweet fellowship that we have, we're like a family within a family. You know, we have an issue, we pray for each other. Who's, who's going for a test for this and who's doing that? And then we pray for each one of you here. Emily, uh, Eileen de, de Jesus is here today. We've been praying for her. We prayed for Larry Modzaleski when he was going through something, right? We, I, don't know, we, I could go around the room, we're praying for Frank Corso. I hear he's doing well. We've prayed for... Uh, if I look around the room, we've prayed for each, I mean, Laura Persons, but man, we prayed for you for, it seemed like forever. Um, I, look, I just look around. Am I right, Teresa? Right? You look around this room. I mean, it's, and, and that's what brings you a part of, of this family. We're a family. We're, we're a body. And it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Hit it, Susan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking the bread from house to house. So daily, they did this daily in the temple. And man, this how about in the temple worship, right? We come together for worship. What a great uh, worship team we have uh, and all the work that goes into that. 
and uh, Rocco uh, leading that. It's just uh, words can't express. I mean, I, I was from a church that we used to uh, have a pianist who for a long time was John Walling. She used to play the organ. And that was fine by me. Right, John? John was pretty good. They didn't know that about John Walling. And um, we would sing from a hymnal. And that's great. We were worshiping God. Here, this is unbelievable. This is, this is the top. <laughs> so don't miss it. Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So not forsaking, not yet, Susan, <laughs> but exhorting. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. No, nope, the other way. It'll get there. Sorry, folks. Um, go ahead, not forsaking. Thank you. As is the manner of some. So don't miss church. Why? Because some do it. Don't be like those people that do that. But exhorting one another, encouraging one another, right? Why? And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Why, why would that matter? Why would that matter so much the more as the day is approaching? What day? What day are we talking about? The day of the great day of the Lord, right? Hit it, Susan. One more time. One more time. Do you want your life to be a mess when you see the Lord come by? Right? You know, we, we don't want to have a, a, a messed up life, so... Being together here and learning from, from the Bible, having fellowship with one another, being accountable to one another. Where are you going to be accountable watching this on the internet, watching it on YouTube? Um, where's the fellowship of missing church? You know, I come to church because I love seeing each and every one of you. And I mean that. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. And um, so if you're not here, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss something. If you're going to miss Tuesday night lady study, you're going to miss something that you could have had for the rest of your life, for all eternity. You could have learned something to bring you closer to Christ, to learn something more about another sister or another brother in here that you can get closer and bond you don't, don't miss out on that. Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Susan Tesh, hit it. So, why not church? Are you fully committed to Christ, his church, and his kingdom? Are you? And I say, if you're not, well, well why not? And if you notice... It, this is not a scripture, but if you recall when Christ spoke to Peter um, after Peter went fishing, after Jesus uh, was risen from the dead, Jesus said to Peter, do you love me, Peter? And he said, yes, I love you. Then feed my lambs. And he said, if you love me, feed my, no, he said, tend, I think he said, tend my sheep. And then he said, if you love me again, he said it three times to him, feed my lambs. I'm not sure, but it's sheep, feed my sheep. It's, it's in that vein. But the, but the point that Jesus was making is that we can't walk around and say that we love God and not love his body and not love his church. There are no floating Christians that just come in and out and go as they please and all that. Find a local body of believers. This is not a commercial for Grace Bible Fellowship. This is a commercial for the kingdom of God. 
you have to get plugged in somewhere. If you have, it's been, you've all probably heard the analogy of a bunch of coals, hot coals in a fireplace. If you remove one of them and put it out on its own, what's gonna happen to that coal? Audience participation. That coal's gonna just burn out. You put the coal back into the pile of coals, it's gonna light up. And that's, that's the body of Christ, see? So Christ told Peter that your love for me is equivalent to loving the church. When the apostle Paul, whose name was Saul, before he was converted, and he encountered Christ on the road to Damascus, what did Jesus say to him? Audience participation. Why are you persecuting me? He's persecuting the church. And Jesus said, you're persecuting me. Jesus died for his church. He, yes, he died for us individually. But the body of Christ, I think, has been, uh, in, in, in what, I, what I see out there has been kind of washed, kind of like liquidated. You know, it's not as... Uh, as full as, as you know, as we sh as should be. It's sort of like um, diluted. That's the word I'm trying to think of. It's been diluted. It, the body of Christ is so important. It's, it's akin to loving Christ. So, and that's what Jesus said. And I think, do we have another slide? Well, that's it. So my question to you is if you're not a part of this body or some other body, why not? Why aren't you in love with the body of Christ? Why aren't you invested? You're gonna miss out on all those benefits that we love one another, we care for one another, we exhort one another, we confess our sins one to one another, we grow, we're edified, we're exhorted. We come under the tutelage of a great pastor. Pastor Dave put so much sweat and so much blood into these sermons um, to give to you, to equip us. Be grateful for this place. Um, and, and so many servants here. Oh, I could go on forever. Dino in the back. No. I mean, <laughs> uh, Susan over here helping me out. Um, Judy. Trish Durande, all the Sunday school teachers, um, the ushers, the greeters, the, the, the fellowship workers with the, with the meals. Um, I mean, we could go on and on. Uh, you, you're missing out on all of this. I said Rocco. I said Rocco. Pay attention. Um, so that's my, my question to you. What, what is going on? What is, what is holding you back from not being a part of Jesus' church right here or somewhere else? Because he puts the church on line with your commitment to him. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so um, I want to thank you for uh, listening to me. I'm going to close this in prayer. And then I can ask the worship team to, to come up. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we, we thank you so much for your love and your care for this place especially. Uh, thank you for each part that you have called necessary. There is no part just like the human body, that is unnecessary. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for giving us this great gift of salvation that you've bestowed upon us, that Jesus died for our sins, our punishment, that we so deserved. But you have given us new life. Lord, I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And if anyone would like to talk to me or Pastor Dave or any, anyone in here about the life in Christ, if you're not a Christian, please, by all means, come see me.